Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. We're with match number five with the Soul Sisters. This is an okay hand. I don't like the double ghost quarters. Might be time just to go back down to two of two of ghost quarters. As you don't want too many of these, like Windbreaker's Hikes coming to play tap. This can't add the mana for uh, the Spectral Processions. And you do want Spectral Procession on time, especially if it's like Honor the Pure. So this is kind of a tricky hand because we start with a Windbreaker's Heights into play tap, most likely. Uh, we can go flag stones. All right, so perfect. It's actually going to be Sarah's Ascendant because we have the Martyr. Uh, most likely we're going up against Fish, so you could make the argument that I should have gone a, a Soul Attendant here to gain a life off of his second turn play. Uh, but I think that if I draw... Yeah, and if I still draw into... Yeah, it's going to be Ghost Quarter. And we'll Martyr... And then attacking with the Sarah's Ascendant. And he'll be up to a 6-6. Six, six. We'll sack it in a turn. So he'll put in the Curse Catcher. I don't care about a Curse Catcher. So now we can actually block with the Martyr if he attacks in. And this will put us up the life total we need. So most likely just going to go... Uh, Windbrus Heights here, of course. Most likely just honor the pure... I don't think I need to care about pathing off anything. And this gains me another life. I highly doubt he can do more than seven. He can probably do six. Unless he's have, he has a Harbinger. <sighs> oh, this is so dirty. Well, if he's got the Harbinger, he's got the Harbinger. And he does. So he's going to get me underneath that pivotal 30 life. But he had two cars in hand. I think we had to just play the odds there that it wasn't a Harbinger. Yeah, they, we're, we're very poorly. Sideboarded too for a Merfolk match. These are where you want uh, the, the Day of Judgments or Wrath of God type effects. So I probably should have just held back my Sarah's Ascendant, because the only way we lost that game was for Sarah's Ascendant to get bounced. <sighs> so here, let's do another Wimbrus Heights. I hate the Wimbrus Heights here because they're pretty slow. I think just in honor of the pure now is probably the right card to put underneath. And we'll put out the Sarah's Ascendant, because it can block... And kill. See if he's got a lord underneath that vial. He doesn't. Alright, so... That's good news. He knows we have a path to exile. So I want information first. So I'm going to path... Off the Mary Ruggieri. Which is the Lord of Atlantis, which is fine. It just makes him unblockable. We go down to an 18. He's down to one card in his hand. Hopefully, it's a big hopefully, we cannot draw a land here and get something that is... Another Path to Exile, that's actually good. 
So we will ghost quarter here, I think. And Sarah, Sarah, soul attendant. And I think I actually will attack in with the Sarah ascendant. But, as usual, wow, I'm surprised he actually did that. Yeah, now we just play the Sarah's Senate again. Okay, now he's out of cards. The violon two is pretty rough. So first off, we're in the path of the Lord of Atlantis. I don't know why I just decided to kill a curse catcher. I'm not going to not do that. We'll take the damage. I like my soul attendants more than his harbingers. And I'm going to kill the ghost quarter. Just go get another planes. Another path to exile. That's good. Uh, pretty good padding here. Two cards in our opponent's hand. It's going to be a Lord of Atlantis. And we'll use another path. I think we still attack in. This is risky, though. I'm going to kill it. I wanted to keep a card in my hand, but let's just thin out. Not a lot of cards left, uh, lands left to draw into if we... Our opponent doesn't have a lot of lands either. We've killed three lords. There's the fourth lord. But we need a high impact card here. Not a martyr. So it's anyone's game. This comes down to who can top deck better. I want to find like rangers, spectral possessions, any of those type of cards. And avoid him having other spreading seas. Kara's actually not very good at this moment. Because I've used all of my... Oh, absolutely make this, this trade. He probably has a lord underneath this. So we'll double block on the, the master. Confused at that attack. So now four or uh, four lords are dead.
There's a master of waves. It's going to give me a lot of life. But it's going to give him a lot more little elementals. So I absolutely want to hit into a Sarah's Ascendant now. <laughs> well, no, are we up enough? We've got to be up enough. Exactly 30, so he needs to attack into the Kira. Now, do I take these out? I think I just take the damage. This is just so awkward. I'll kill one of them for sure. Find another martyr. Which is just terrible, terrible draw. So I guess I should have... Yeah, I might have just let everything go through there and then attacked in. And then we would have got a Sarah's Ascendant and, and a bunch of Honor the Pures. That would have been the right play. But it was anyone's game. Whoever top decked their high impact card first. Master Ways by far was the better card to top deck into than <laughs> any of these Martyr of Sands or whatnot. So he's going to attack into everything, I believe. Which I'll take. Go down to a 10. And on the crackback, though, he's in trouble. We'll cast into Johnny's Pride, mate. Oh, I shouldn't have cast that. Yeah, that's one less card. But depending how he blocks, well, we're going to try it. Oh, if it's not another Harbinger, it'd have to be the third Harbinger, though, that's sitting under there. We pull it off. Awesome. Woo. Crazy. <laughs> we'll bring in the Archangel of Thune, and that's all we bring in. I could bring in like celestial flares, but I don't think I don't think we need it. Sundry Growth could kill a actually th Sundry Growths are great here. Uh, one of the ways they kill us is by giving their guys island walk, and Sundry Growth is a great card to hold on to. The problem is though, we want everything else in our deck except maybe the Arc Champions. I think Arc Champions against this are just kind of slow and clunky, and I could even bring in a Celestial Flare. I'm gonna bring in just a one of Celestial Flare. Gets around Kira. It is refreshing to go up against something not called Jund. But, as I stated before, Jund is that type of matchup that I will gladly, gladly go up against over and over again. This hand is going to be a very solid keeper. It's got a path to exile. It has a flagstones. But he has his first turn, Vile. So we'll, we'll just lead off with the Martyr. Has a ranger too, if we can get above. So, Silverial Adept. And a Curse Catcher. Which he's going to flash in, I guess. Which is fine. I'm going to play a Soul Warden. And then just keep the Martyr back. 
to block the Silvergill and then sack for 15 life. There's Akira. Yeah, I don't care about Akira at the moment. I could actually just trade. With the the Soul Warden, I don't think that's smart though. We will block. See if he shows me a lord. Gain 15 life. And the Johnny's Primate is going to come out to play next turn. Yeah, see if he sneaks that Lord in. He might as well. Okay, so actually three unknown cards in his hand then. We have Wimber Sight. That's actually probably the best draw we could have drawn into. Because we will Pride Mate. He can't cast another creature without Pride Mate getting big. Which puts him in kind of a, uh, a predicament. We have tons of life to spare. And now a nice little hideaway card that got him last time. Uh, I'll put a Pride Mate underneath. Because I think the Sarah's... Oh no, we'll put a Sarah's Ascendant. Yeah, Sarah's Ascendant's fine. Tons of ammo in our opponent's hand. Just going to get in with Kara. That's fine. We'll go down to 33. And I'm not going to be attacking in anytime soon. We find the another Yeah, we just ranger here. He could have a mana leak just chilling in his hand. I've seen Merfolk do that every now and again. But here we'll go Sarah's Ascendant and Sarah's Ascendant. And we will not attack into the Harbinger of Tides. Because currently our lovely little Johnny's Primate is playing uh, defense here. Not even too concerned with the Master of Waves at this point. Chalice on one is extremely annoying, though. We just have to wait for a Sundering Growth now. Because unfortunately, I do have to... Do I attack in with every... No, because this casts it without paying its mana cost and it still gets countered. The, <laughs> look at our hand. It is completely shut down by that chalice on one. So, Honor the Pier will come in. That's definitely a decent little trade. I'm okay with this. And I'm 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 thinking about just casting a few of these Sarahs of Sand. I'm gonna cast one to let it get countered. That way we we'll return the rank can get it back. Oh I didn't bring in Return of the Ranks. I thought for for a minute I did. 
So Caverns of Souls. Yeah, this arrow's sinister just can be dead unless I can get a Sundering Growth. He has one card in hand. We'll start bashing. Oh, beautiful. That was a great draw. Yeah, now Master of Waves is very, very weak. Our opponent got pretty flooded out. And he'll he'll scoop there. So we end up going three and two with the Soul Sisters deck. Which is okay. The both that Jun and the Black Kareen deck that we lost to were very, very close, but the two Jun matchups and even that Merfolk matchup were close as well. So it's, it's, this is how I like to play Modern, though. These are very, very fair decks against each other. We didn't see any combo. We didn't see any really what I consider <laughs> unfun or unfair decks to play against. And I think the Soul Sisters, I guess in conclusion, I think Soul Sisters is a, is a really good deck to play in the metagame. What I think might actually be a little bit better is Martyr Proc, though. And so we'll do a, 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 a League of Martyr Proc because all of those matchups are incredibly good for Martyr Proc. I love to play against Jun with Martyr Proc. Eventually, you get to the point where you can start recurring uh, the lock with the the Kami lock as well as uh, just casting a bunch of Martyr of Sands and, and whatnot. And, and even cards like the, the Dragon that puts in a 5-5 Dragon each turn when you have uh, enough lands late game start to get you a ton of value and you just need to you just need to stabilize versus jund and the ghostly quarters and wrath of gods do a very good job uh in doing so liliana is a bit of a pain in pain for the deck to deal with i'm actually even thinking about uh bringing in a new la uh, anguish on making out of the shadows of Renistrad to put in the deck because three life is nothing Instant speed is still good. It is instant speed, isn't it? I think it is instant speed. Yeah, it's not quite Vindicate. It has instant speed and, and lose three life, uh, whereas Vindicate is sorcery speed. And then, so, the, the difference between three and four mana is huge in modern. Three is something that I think is pretty reasonable to be able to cast in modern. Four, yeah, four is 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 where you need to be doing huge effects like like your, your Day of Judgment type effects, or your Wrath of God type effects. So be looking forward to having another Martyr. We'll, we'll throw Scred through the ringer again. Scred is decent versus Jund. A lot of times you can keep up in the card advantage. If like Chandra can be a bit of an issue with, for Jund to deal with. Screds and Lightning Bolts are, are very good. Relic of Progenitus are extremely good against Jund. And so we'll, we'll give that a go. I'm not quite sure what list I'll run with Jund. I think Worm Coil Engine is looking pretty phenomenal against decks that aren't running Path to Exile. So if we're going to go up against a lot of Jun-based decks, if you, we can just drop a Worm Coil Engine, it's very, very tough. Even though Colgan's Command is is you can kill the Worm Coil Engine and bolt off the Life Linker, but you still have a 3-3 Death Toucher back. Uh, but Goblin Dark Duel is also really good in Scred with the Volcanic Fallouts. I don't think that I'd run that list at the moment because I don't think Volcanic Fallouts are... are the way to go they're not the that best they're not that good against like zoo and they're not that good against because zoo a lot of the times like they'll be three three toughness so the Chandra's phoenix and the Chandra's phoenix might still be a good route to go because we're going to go against the colgan's command type decks and be able to get back but with all the scavenging news running around i'm not sh even quite sure that if we want to go the Chandra's phoenix so i'll mess with scred uh, so all the typical Rogue Deck Builder decks that we, we usually play every time there's been a, a big change in Modern, I'll give them a go. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.